Hey guys, just a little bit of a backstory before we get into the shoe review. In 2009, I found out that exercising once a week was just not cutting it. And then I started running, placed third in a 5K. So I was kind of bit by the bug. I soon kind of hooked up with a running buddy and coaxed another friend of mine to start running and, and he's kind of really into it now as well. I have completed nine marathons and a lot of half marathons. Scoured the internet to find out better ways to run read probably every marathon training program. After my last marathon, I distinctly remember doing some speed work on the track in a very minimal shoe. It was the, a Merle, there was no padding at all. And I remember feeling pain after that. Finally, I got it diagnosed and the problem that I have is tendonitis in my second metatarsal. I also have bursitis in my heel. I've always had Achilles problems, but I was able to overcome them with just ice. And sometimes when I'm on a run, I'll, I'll have to like work out that pain. It, it kind of goes away in my heel on the right side, which is also the side that I've had knee surgery on in the past. IT band problems, shin splints, those things were always corrected. They went away, so you can see some of my videos in the past where I review the Hoka shoe. I'm a big fan of the Hoka Bondi's. I ran a marathon in the Clifton's one time, which I thought was a really good shoe. It's much lighter than the Bondi, but I ended up getting a bunch of blisters. It may be because of the sock that I was wearing. I wore an Injinji sock, which I thought would have been great. My theory on that is that with the Injinjis, which go on your feet like a glove, that little extra piece of material between each toe cumulatively increased the size of my feet, if you can imagine that, inside the shoe. Plus with the, the swelling of the feet during a marathon added to rubbing in the front, in the forefoot. And so I had um, a nasty blister and almost lost a toenail. So recently, my goal was to go out and find another pair of Bondi's. I went to a store in Taiwan. It's the only one I could find in all of Taizong to stock Hoka in my area. And I discovered the mock. So meanwhile, I went and I got fitted for an orthotic. I scheduled an appointment with the doctor. He puts foam on the floor kind of a spongy type of, well, it's more brittle material. And he pushed my feet in and made impressions into these blocks. And a week later, an orthotic was done. It cost me 6,000 NT dollars. So I took the orthotics and I put them in my new mocks. This is probably the third time out with the Hoka mops. I'm gonna use Brooks socks this time. I got my inner soles in. So the normal Hoka inner sole is out of the shoe and I got these orthotics. Now they did not have my size, which is a US seven and a half. I just went with the ladies shoe. It looks just like the male shoe. And all you have to do is add 1.5 to the male size and you get the female size. They fit great, they look great. You won't be able to tell the difference. A little embarrassed about it. Here it is, the Hoka mock. I like the reflective material back here. I like the contrast between the white, black, and gray. We've got a mesh upper here, and the mesh is a little bit different if you look closely on this side. There's a tighter weave here than there is on the top and this side of the shoe. Very breathable. In fact, when you have your foot in there, you can see, you, if you wear like a white sock, you can see your sock in there. I can see the top of my orthotic, actually, if I, I don't know if you can. There it is, you can see the top of my orthotic, right there. It's not only good looking, but the mesh is also breathable. And this is like an EVA here, foam, which is much more flexible. I just picked up a rock. 
and then you've got hard rubber. I'm always a fan of, of a complete cover of hard rubber on shoes, just because they'll last longer. They are pretty stiff. I'm kind of reversing my philosophy of wanting a minimal shoe. I'm going back to maximal cushioning. One thing is my age, another thing is my foot problem. And also, if I wanna do any kind of long distance that your form breaks down, I would really like to do maybe a 50K or something next year. So I'm going back to the maximal shoe. I've played with the extremes here. Maybe also in the description, I'll list the different kinds of shoes that I've worn when I started running again in my 40s until now. The laces I do like, they're kind of stretchy and they're flat. I saw another video where some guy was really having to, to tighten this uh, to get a good snug fit and then he was getting some bulging in this area that he didn't like. But for me, with my orthotic in there, I definitely cannot get these two sides to, to touch. It's, uh, it's a good fit. There's some good rigidity in the back. You see, for example, my Altras, there's just, there's no support at all. You can just slip your foot in there, you know, like a, a sock, but this, you definitely have to open the laces and slide your foot in, and you do have support, good support in the back. Hoka's are always uh, known for their, their cradling effect, and also that your foot will kind of fit down into the shoe. So your, your heel is not way up here. It, it goes down the inside of the shoe, much lower than what it looks like here. I don't know what that is for. This is nice to be able to pull on the shoe. Again, that's something that Hoka's done before. It's part of the uh, ProFly series. You know, if you see these videos online and, and people complain about blisters, um, maybe it's just, it could be the sock combination that they're using. And it could be that they bought the wrong size. It could be just the shape of their feet. So if, just because one person gets a blister in a certain shoe doesn't mean that you will if you buy the same shoe. So that's where I'm at right now trying to get back into running with these injuries. I also have cervical stenosis and also a, what's called a spondy in my lower back. Taking it easy, but I'm working my way back in and hopefully the Hoka mocks are gonna help me and keep me healthy. And I've signed up for a 6K, which will happen in a couple of months. And we'll just have to play it by ear, uh, whether I can do longer distances or I just gotta stick with 5Ks, but still running one foot in front of the other.